Now this morning we have a really special treat. It's a way above freezing out there. It must be 38 degrees. Everything's melting up. If we can get this JB Weld shaped on this wheel, we'll get this in prime today. I hope. I hope. So let me backtrack just a little bit here. Because of having this dent in here, I made a little jig yesterday. I'm going to try to get some of the shaping done. I'll show how I shape it. And I've been thinking about how I want to do some of the other things on here. I have some other little tricky stuff I want to try. But basically, we have a day that it's above freezing out there. It's, it is just unbelievable. Most of the work that we've done on this restoration has been in below freezing, crappy outside conditions. Today might be the first day it's really reasonable out there. Now, I had this dry and under a heating vent, as most people know. Anything two-part, where you mix part A and part B, heat accelerates it, so I thought that would get the cure going. And what I had to do was pretty tricky. What I had to do, I came down after putting the JB Weld on and saw that it had all started walking its way down to here. So what I did, let me show the trick, I put it this way. So now that, I, without touching it, now it started going this way. When it finally hardened, I see a lot of it went out by the lip, so I'm going to have a lot to sand and trim on the lip. But I call that babysitting where you watch how something flows, like it goes uphill, it goes downhill, because this does say soft, probably a half an hour, 45 minutes. So I wanted to do my little test just to see how hard the JB Weld is like a rock already. It should sand out without any problem. So now knowing that this is going to sand out, I'm ready to plan out the day. So as I'm flipping battery chargers and trying to sequence things up for the day, it is really going to be probably the first decent day in a really long time. And it's a shame that all the snow is melting up because the roads, it would, it would be a riding day if we didn't have with the roads all full of salt and goop. But what it's telling me is with spring in the air, more than likely it'll probably snow by the weekend. <laughs> you never get... You never get too excited at this time of year. And it's easy to get all excited and I want to go for a ride and look out the window and you check the weather and then the roads are all full of salt and water and mud and dirt. And you get home and you got a two hour job to clean the bike. All right, so I'm going to have my coffee and get down to the shop and see what we can do about getting that wheel sanded out because boy, the paint will dry up great today. And pretty soon we'll be coming up on that wonderful time of the year where every day you have to look outside, look at the weather, and decide do you want to ride or do you want to work on motorcycles? Okay, we're ready to go to work. Now, any complex shape, it looks like this would be real easy and you would just take some sandpaper and the end of your thumb and go around that. Yeah, that's not it at all. To get this that you can't see the repair when this is done, it's got to be right in a lot of dimensions. The dimension is it's got to have the, the diameter right, and we have a jig for that. We've got to get this radius right, and we do have a the little jig that we made for that should help. And we've got to make sure, since we don't have a tire sealing issue, we just need to go around this enough that we have to ma maintain that radius for appearance sake so it looks like we're when that tire turns around you don't see a I call it a snake but anyway this is a job that looks a lot easier than it is when you start doing it you find out it can be wrong in so many ways and every way it's wrong it looks terrible now the first thing is to pull off the gorilla tape that acted as a little dam a dam of sorts anyway it helped us maintain this this diameter and just to look at it real close I've got the little jig I made yesterday, and it looks like we've got that part. So we have this diameter really, really close, but we'll keep the jig and monitor every step of the way. Now, I also have this cutting block. It's called a permagrit tool. It's carbide. It tells you two things. When I go to cut this, if it comes off as powder, I know this is this material is dry and ready to work on. If it comes off as chewing gum, not so much. 
Now, it's just really a delicate thing because what I want to do, see, I want it to be that I can walk this right off the end and it'll tell me if I have any low spots. Okay, the first thing it's done, it's picked up a high spot, which is okay. Okay, and because this is glass filled, this material has little hairs coming out of it, but that's quite okay. So this is gonna take just some real patience and I'll do this. And of course I'm gonna sand that whole edge when we're done. This gets me that I have this edge, hopefully. Hopefully is a big word here. Now, I can go to the smooth side and it's powdering right off so I know we're dry. I can just dress that edge a little bit, go to the smooth side. Now that looks like we're close. See, we're not, I don't want to go the last little bit. The last little bit, I want to be delicate. But it looks like I've got, now I can take, this, this is where it really gets tricky. I can take this edge, the radius that goes up and around, and I can start working that. Now because I spent half my life carving wood, balsa wood mainly, and hardwood, I have a real good feel. Most of the time I would do this, I wouldn't even look at it. I'd feel it and say, oh, 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 not much of a radius. But this part of it is gonna go on. It takes time. And we don't have to get it right immediately on the first shot. It's a back and forth thing. I'm trying to pick up this radius by hand. As soon as I think I'm close, then I can switch to the soft side of the block. Now this is the relatively, okay, we got it close, relatively easy part. So see, now I can go right around the whole part. And I know I've got I've got it roughed in. This is how you know your JB Weld is totally cured. I've got this diameter real close now. If I put my gauge on it. I mean, I was out by an eighth of an inch before. So I know that's a whole lot better than it was. And this is telling me that I can continue sanding. With no problem. Now they tell you you can you can sand this after so many hours and minutes and but it's the temperature. If if you have this at 90 degrees, it's going to cure very quickly. At the shop is typically 65 degrees. It takes a little longer. It takes a lot longer. Okay, now using this little radius tool that we made and some 220 grit, this is this is one of the things that's going to be very time consuming. But I don't want to get too aggressive with it. I just want to work my way into this. Try to get that radius as close as I can. And this is basically a mirror image of this shape. I made a little mold with Bondo, glass filled Bondo. It's going to take a few minutes. I may as well just do some of this off camera because, oh, you'll be bored. I mean, I'm bored. What am I talking about? Anyway, this should get some of that radius in there. And of course, big thing, coming off like powder. Now, could you do a lot of this with, uh, you know, some other method of heating the wheel, hammering it? There's, there's a million ways to do it. This is, a, this is only a cosmetic repair, nothing. Now one thing will help here in the, in the valley is I have a cutter for the Dremel tool that's just about the right radius, very close, 
but most of this I have to do by feeling with my bare hand. Now with every step we're getting closer and closer and I'm just going back with the original the original sanding block to pick up the high spots. Now there's a little bit of a a little bit of a low spot here. I'm going to just take a drop or two of thick CA. I can get this in there. Since the CA is roughly the same hardness and strength as JB Weld, maybe we ought to order a new tube of this stuff. Come on, baby, come on. I only need a drop. Oh, yay, yay. Look at this. You believe this? Come on, come on. Here we go. And I just need a drop here on the edge. Now I'm just going to let that dry. And then that'll, this is just going to build up that edge just a very little bit. Thick CA. Now, using a brand new tube of CA, it's, it's, I just want to put an edge on this, a hard edge. Let this dry. See, the CA and the JB Weld are extremely strong. They're actually stronger than the aluminum is. When you sand, you sand more aluminum than you do JB Weld and CA, but this will just add that little edge to the bead when it dries. Whoop, Brodac Thick and Thin CA. Oh, a little special tool with the radius is really handy because it lets me pick up the high spots when I put the CA down and I can see any of the spots that are still shiny are low spots. So it's super, super handy to have a tool that has this shape in it when we're doing the sanding. Now you don't really see it on the video, but this took a lot of time. Now, when you get to the, to the end of what you think it it's as good as it can be with a rubber glove and this is the part that really takes time. I'm looking for a high spot or a low spot. I run my hand around the hole. That edge is fine. This flat is fine. This needs a little bit of work up here. You can find high or low spots. And when I used to carve wood for uh, many hours of every year making cowlings and wingtips and different model airplane parts well you did most of it watching football or something not even looking at the part it's by feel all of this is by feel now from this point on the ca built up that ridge just a little bit and if you just keep going back over and over now the primer is going to fill some of that in if it's not exactly perfect but the idea is to get it as good as you can right now. I feel there's a high spot there. Your hand doesn't lie. You can trick your eye a lot easier than you can trick your hand. Your hand just feels things that your eye just looks at, especially because this is flat. There's still a little low spot there. May have to put a drop of CA in there. And because our yellow accent stripe is going to run right through this, so I don't want to have I don't want to have it going through an area that's not as good as I can make it. That's for sure. And so we've tried to condense a couple of, a couple hours of work down into five minutes of video here. But it is a beautiful day. It's warmed up, so I'm I'm looking forward to if I can get this done, and I'm not rushing, but. If, it, if I get this done, I can get at least one coat of primer on, and if it if it looks like it's going to go up into the 40s, can you imagine the 40s? We haven't seen the 40s in a, <laughs> many moons. Yeah, that's really coming out nice. That That is going to be when it's done, and we've used no Bondo. 
none of the, this stuff is as strong as well we'll find out now what i'm going to ultimately do is make a map in other words i'm going to show if you look at the wheel from the side of the disc with the tire valve at 12 o'clock we're basically at 8 to 10 8 to 9 because when I get this done, you will not be able to tell. I'm, I'm, I'm being egotistical here. Maybe I'll forget where it is. And then what I'll always do is put the tire on from the other side, of course. And since we cut the tires off, once the wheel is painted, we don't take any chances scratching it up. Yeah, that looks like that's going to be a little final sanding here. And the thing that made this work as good as it did, two things. This tool was one of them. And number two, that the JV Weld is is just for this kind of a job a lot harder to sand than bondo but once you build that shape up you know it's not going to chip or nick or anything and in the end this is going to be a, a I, I hope a perfectly repaired wheel the last few steps before we get out there it is a beautiful day it's absolutely a day that i'm sure some of the guys are out riding. I'm positive. Anyway, this is a great thing to do. It just say it just keeps your your balancer from looking homeless at some point in time. This dedicated bolt that's exactly the right diameter for the curvy girls. Now what we have to do now is back mask off the that's gonna be a relatively simple thing. Back mask off the middle of the wheel. The center and then wipe everything down preps all it up I'm looking for flaws even right now and I'm sure I'll find some but anyway there was a lot of work went into don't need to make this any tighter than that a lot of work went into getting that edge just the way I wanted it and I think I've got it as good as I possibly could make it and the most important part of prepping up the wheel with this is prep wall is this edge and this rim if we have a problem with the paint more than likely it's going to get nicked or scratched here and that's why we want to get all of this aluminum from the sanding grit we'll wipe the whole wheel down then i'll back mask this center but you never can have a part too clean Boy, if there's if there's one lesson i've learned you don't ever want to paint over some grease or dirt or that it always happens that a year later or sometime that you're really not expecting it, you're looking, there's a bubble in the paint or there's a something in the paint. Or Anyway, we're going to, I'm trying to get this as clean as possible. Prep wool does a good job of that too. Now when I back mask this off, I want this edge, I want to be able to paint right here. The tire seals down here. It doesn't seal up here, but I want that paint to go right down. I don't want to see a silver spot or anything, or a primer or anything. Right, right about there is where I've been back masking too. So we're all back masked up here and ready to spray. The weather's absolutely beautiful out there. I, I think it's up over 40 degrees already. It's just crazy how nice it is out there. But after the winter we've had, the icicle winter, <laughs> it's hard to go backwards. Anyway, we're going to use Rust-Oleum self-etching primer for the first coat. Now, always better to get the coats on light and let it dry between coats. I'm hoping I'm going to get two coats on today, but it's always good. The, the worst thing you can do is just blow it on and get runs and drips and drools. I want to get this as nice as possible. I'll try to let it dry at least 20 minutes, a half hour between coats.
Okay, that gets 20 minutes, half hour to dry. I'll have a cup of coffee and come back to this and get a second coat on. Well, the weather held out today. We got the two coats of primer on. Wow, we are just, I'm ready. I'm ready. Tomorrow or the next day, we'll be ready to sand that out. Maybe get another coat of prime on, maybe not. We'll see if we need it and paint it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we really did make good use of a, a day that we were able to paint. And the wheel just looks, it's gonna be just like that front wheel, trust me. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.